Thank you to the chairman. Uh, Madam Secretary, uh, welcome. One major incentive for domestic investment is Section 174 of the Internal Revenue Code, uh, allowing U.S. businesses to immediately deduct R&D costs. This provision has historically received bipartisan support uh, as it incentivizes research investment and job creation uh, here in the United States. Beginning next year, however, U.S. businesses will be required to capitalize and amortize those costs over five years rather than immediately deducting them. Earlier this summer, I reintroduced the American Innovation and Jobs Act along with Senator Hassan to prevent the expiration of this important provision, allowing businesses to continue to deduct their R research and experimental costs would be a critical incentive for investment in innovation in the United States. This legislation has received considerable bipartisan support with many of my esteemed colleagues on this committee from both sides of the aisle joining the effort. In your response to questions for the record at your nomination hearing back in January, you stated that you would carefully consider the concerns raised regarding the deductibility of research expenditures, paying particular attention to any effects on small businesses during the recovery. So I ask you, uh, Madam uh, uh, Secretary, given President Biden's interest in encouraging investment in manufacturing, jobs, and innovation in the United States, would you encourage Congress to build back better by maintaining the current immediate deductibility of R&D expenses? So Senator Young, thank you for that question. You're absolutely right that promoting innovation is a critical priority for President Biden and is a very important contributor to productivity growth in this country. And um, we're absolutely looking for ways um, to, to do that and certainly continuing to allow firms to expense R&D rather than uh, shifting to amortizing could be one very effective way to bring that about. Um, there, there could also um, be more generous R&D tax credits. Um, there might be other approaches, but many OECD countries um, do permit expensing of R&D. So this is something we certainly would want to work with you on and find a way to um, be supportive of more tax support for R&D. I would mention that the president's budget proposes to repeal um, the foreign derived intangible um, income feature of the tax law. Madam Secretary, could I just interject? Finance this. What, why is our proposal not in the president's green book? Um, I think the president the president is proposed to repeal the FDII um, exemption and to use the money for um, support of R and D, but wants to work with Congress to decide on what is the best approach to doing that. Certainly open to this this okay. strategy. Well, in consultation with other eminent economists and, and learned individuals, uh, policy experts, and, and colleagues alike, uh, uh, they believe that uh, we'd get a lot more bang for the buck uh, through the American Innovation and Jobs Act uh, with Senator Hassan uh, than we would through the FDII uh, uh, manipulation that you mentioned, and, and the, the two are not entirely equivalent. So. Uh, I'm going to move on in, in light of, of uh, uh, the time limitations here and other colleagues needing to speak. Uh, I'll just note that the administration's revenue proposals released last month contain over $2 trillion of tax increases on U.S. businesses, including increasing the U.S. corporate tax rate from 21% to 28% for tax years beginning after 2021. That, of course, would include uh, a tax that fell somewhat on workers and consumers. This proposal would create a 32.5% combined U.S. corporate income tax burden when considering state and local taxes. By comparison, 
and my time is running out. By comparison, China has a 25% rate, and the OECD countries have a 23.5% average rate. When we're thinking about American competitiveness, I think it's very important that we focus on this issue. 